Presenting one of my best bases to this date, meet the Hydra V2. It is a base that I intentionally created to be the best of both worlds, for withstanding offline raids it features a very strong core protected by a roof bunker, which can be built very early into the vibe giving you a huge advantage. It also has its TC protected behind a vending machine which makes it really OP. Next there's a bunch of loot rooms so that you can split your loot throughout the whole base and make the raiders quit before they even started. Now for online raid protection this base features my new all time favorite shooting floor with bunch of angles and fantastic head peaks which makes you nearly invisible from the outside and gives you the tightest angles to defend your base from. The next really cool feature this base has are these little holes through which you can throw down grenades and kill anyone that's close to your base. There's also a bunch of bedrooms which I split it all throughout the floors and gatehouses so there's going to be more than enough respawn points. Now when creating this base I especially focused on making it as simple to build as possible so that all of you newer players could build it with ease. It also uses a bunker that has been in rust for ages so this base should be fully compatible with console rust as well. Now let's go and have a better look at this beauty in the base tour. Starting the tour off we have disconnectable TCs, there's 3 of them in total and they can be easily disconnected like this. Note that this base can be built entirely using a single TC and it does not require any externals. Although I don't recommend having no externals at all but there is that option out there. Moving along we have these alone in Tokyo style gatehouses with integrated bedrooms. Next in our compound we have these sick turret pods which have a great visibility over the whole perimeter and the compound is completely symmetrical all around. Moving into the base we have a really spacious and cozy living area with a bunch of storage and I kept it pretty simple so that you could design it to your own liking. As you can see the core is protected by a roof bunker which can only be opened from the inside using a couple of machetes or any other melee weapons. And to close it just simply place a square upgraded to wood and place a roof on top. The TC is hidden behind a vending machine which adds a couple more rockets to the raid cost. I kept the third floor very simple as well, there is a bunch of space here so you can really do anything you want with it. In the shooting floor, like I mentioned before, there's a bunch of really great angles and there's these angle bite peaks that really help when you need to take back control of your roof. The shooting floor is also completely symmetrical all around. And that's basically it with the base tour, the base itself is very customizable so have fun with it and make it personal. So now let's go and learn how to build it. We're going to start the build by placing these foundations like this which will form the footprint of our starter. Then on this triangle place your door frame and roll everything in. Now to place the tool cover correctly, place a twig doorway as a guide and make sure to place the TC at a similar distance from the doorway as I did because we need to leave this space in order to place that vending machine later on. Now just build a simple airlock and add your deployables.
After you smell some metal, the first thing I recommend changing is the wooden doors into metal ones because when mollies exist, your wooden doors can be raided very easily. After you farm up some stone and metal, next upgrade would be adding a bunker. And to build one, place a wooden foundation followed by a raised triangle on the end and then low triangles on each side of the square. Place your walls on the sides and then close the raised triangle with half walls to prevent people from soft siding it. Now for getting up, if you have a ladder use that and if you do not have it, you can just place down twig stairs and break them when you want to close the bunker. Now next step is to build a chute which is really simple. Now if you want you can build a shelf to fit some large boxes in the chute. And to minimize the chances of getting deep on, place two more double doors right here. Now to close the bunker, place your roof on the wooden square and upgrade it to your desired tier. And to open it, just break that square with machetes or any other melee weapons. I'm going to start this phase by showing you how the core should look upgraded to the final tier. Note that from now on I'll be upgrading the whole base to its final tier just to save some time and I really don't expect you to have this many resources right away. So just upgrade everything gradually as you progress through the game. Now the first and main things I would start upgrading is the roof and TC room as it is the most important parts of the base. Then I would focus on the spots that will become hard to reach or even impossible to upgrade when bases honeycombed, so these are the main areas I focus on when upgrading my bases. When placing the vending machine, make sure to place it as close to the TC as possible. And after placing it, check if you can still open the TC. If it says rotate and you can't open it, just simply put an item inside of the vending machine and it should be fixed. If you want to make this loot room even stronger, you can use these rams placed in this orientation like that and it makes it look even cooler. I missed it earlier, but don't forget to upgrade this floor above as well. Now let's quickly honeycomb the base and start building the second floor. And the first thing I would personally honeycomb is the raised bunker foundation. Now building the second floor is really simple, so just follow my steps.
I chose to use this space for a bedroom but if you want you can build a loot room here as well. Now we're going to honeycomb the base even more and make sure to upgrade these shown walls to metal when you have the resources. Next we're going to build the third floor and the layout is very similar to the second floor so you shouldn't have any difficulties building it. When building the chute, make sure to build it two stories high because this will also be our roof jump up. Next let's build a shooting floor and at the start as you can see I placed these frames here which I later changed into full walls because it makes the base and shooting floor stronger. So I highly suggest you place full walls here instead of the frames. I turned on the symmetry to save some time so what I'm doing on this side you have to repeat on other two sides like shown in the video. Place these frames for stability and now let's go and build the other part of the shooting floor.
Make sure to keep the shown floors upgraded to stone only. Alright, here I'm building a couple of respawn points and if you want you can leave them open to have more room in the shooting floor. After you build the rough shape of your shooting floor, you can finish honeycombing these sides. There's these gaps on the roof which you can easily fix by placing siren lights. We are going to start this phase by building the gatehouse and external TCs. There is going to be 3 of them in total, all identical on each side, so I am using symmetry once again. Note that the compound for this base is completely optional and like I said earlier, this base can be fully used without external TCs at all, but having them really gives you an advantage. In order to place this TC, you have to disconnect the twig connected to the base. And to make these external TCs disconnectable, you must place half holes in this spot right here. Building these gatehouses is really simple. First seal the part in where you'll be placing your beds and then just seal the rest of the gatehouse. Now let's build these turret pods and there's going to be 3 of them in total. The 
before placing metal barricades, I always like to place some twig around, which gives me the ability to place the barricades hanging off the edge like this, which makes it almost impossible to get over the gatehouse with ladders. And the last step of this phase is placing down these walls and to place them correctly there is really no perfect method you just have to practice it before actually using it in vibe and what helps me the most is using old look to see what distance apart i should place the walls And that's basically it, the base is finished. Of course you can add so many more things to this base and make it even better, so I encourage you to mess around with it in the building server and create something truly beautiful. But for now, thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and till the next one, peace.